because many devils were entered into him. And he besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there, and there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would Now Does anybody know what the definition of insanity is? That's right. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, right? One of the greatest wisdom quotes that I ever heard in my life was that, there's a couple of them, I'll give you one. The secret of your success is hidden in your daily routine. The secret of your success is hidden in your daily routine. Another good one is what you can tolerate, you cannot change. What you can tolerate, you can't change. The reason why you can't quit smoking cigarettes is probably because you still like the smell of the cigarette. You, 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 you have not learned to hate it. You have not learned to hate alcohol. You have to, God bless you, <laughs> anoint the child. You have, you have to learn to hate the, that addiction, right? So now I've noticed that there's a lot of people that are stuck in the wilderness with their walk with the Lord. And my prayer is that this word today will break that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it just seems like people that gave their life to the Lord and for the longest time, they're not growing. It's something wrong. And we got to figure out what is going on. Amen. Well, the word is not, let's get ready. Yeah, your thought's gone. Thought's gone, huh? Huh. You know, the devil is a liar. Did it just go out? I appreciate y'all keeping an eye on that. <laughs> that. That annoys me. But what can I do? So, just a kind of a recap. Today's message is called the gospel of insanity, right? And we just went over how the definition of insanity is what? Doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result, right? And we, we, we're seeing that in a lot of Christian lives, there is insanity. There's nothing changing. It seems like there's no elevation, there's no growth. Something is wrong, and we got to get to the bottom of it. And you know what that means, you got to get to the bottom of it? Because you got to get to the root. Jesus said the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Everybody there? Timothy? Yep, Second Timothy, chapter 3. We're going we're gonna to read verse 1 going down just because it's, it's such a classic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, know this also that in the last days perilous times shall come. What is that word perilous in the Greek? Fierce, fierce times shall come. For men shall be lovers of them own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, 
false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such people, turn away from. Pause right there. Did y'all heard of, y'all heard of the video of the men drowning in the water? And the group of teenagers were just like laughing at him as he was dying. They weren't like 13 either. They were like 19, 17, 20. They were smoking a blunt, like five of them. And there's a guy, he had a mental problem. You know what I mean? He wasn't like mental like that, but he had, a, he had something wrong in his mind. And um, he, he, somehow he ended up in the lake and he was drowning. And even when they heard him, like he was like, ah! he was like crying because he knew he was about to die. They started laughing. They was like, oh, I ain't helping you. And they didn't even call nobody, no nothing. The last days are here. The, you don't see what you need to know is, and what you, a lot of people don't realize is the music industry, the movie industry, they really are operating through sorcery and black magic. This is how they're waxing people cold through curses and spells and witchcraft and it's changing and transforming the minds of the people where the Bible says men's hearts will wax colder and colder in the last days where they will have no compassion and we just read that in the last days look at how much stuff was named off right look at that Unnatural, without natural affection, unholy, unthankful, right? Fierce, traitors, heady, high-minded, covetous, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. All of these things are happening now. So it says, for this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women. Laden with sins, led away with diverse lust. What does that word silly mean? Does anybody know? It's not silly like, oh, funny. No, actually, it means dwarfed. What it means is, you ever heard of arrested development? That's what it means. You ever see somebody who's like 55 years old, still wearing baggy jeans and a hat, walking down Main Street? I mean, bro, you a grandfather. You know what I'm saying? It's time to do switch up. That's arrested development, right? And there's an arresting in a lot of people's lives. And it says, listen to this now. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wait a minute. Listen to that carefully. Ever learning, huh? So they're ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge. Like what does that mean? Like it's almost almost like your head is leaking out. Like the word goes in. How many of y'all, and be honest, and you by way of the internet, sometimes you'll read your Bible, you'll bang out like a good solid one or two, three chapters. You're like, amen. You'll close your Bible, get up and walk away, and not remember not even three scriptures of what you just read. That's a problem. Something's going on here. And I believe there's witchcraft at work. I believe it's also the technology, it's the chemicals they're putting in our food. Like, this is not normal. We're supposed to be growing as the church. We are, now, this is globally. This is globally. You will be amazed how many people are in the wilderness right now that are not walking with the Lord the way they're supposed to. So, what we want to do is get to the root of what is causing this, okay? Go to Hebrews chapter 5.
you, chapter 5 of Hebrews. Notice though what we just read in 2 Timothy. Right after it says ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge. What does the next verse say? Such as Jannies and Jambres. Now what is the odds that he would mention the sorcerers right after that? You see that? Remember, Revelation says, by sorcery, all nations were what? Deceived. So by sorcery, were all nations deceived, right? Let's go. Hebrews chapter 5. In the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 11 going down. Everybody there? Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. Paul, that's a little rude, man. How you going to talk to the Hebrews like that? You know what I'm saying? But he's being honest. Yo, that's, that's how I want you to be with me. That's how I expect you to want me to be with you. Be honest. We had a guy walk up to us, talk about he needed money for gas. I'm like, bro, I can smell the alcohol on your breath, bro. You, you got to be honest with people. Stop like, anyway. For when, for when, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Notice it said, teach you again. That means you got to relearn the thing that you were taught already. Something is going on. Okay. So how many of y'all know about the wilderness of sin? How many of y'all know in the days of Moses... How many years did they wander in the wilderness? 40 years. Write that down. So in the wilderness, they was in the wilderness of sin. So now, let's go to Luke chapter 8. Look at verse 26 going down. Okay? Watch what it says in Jesus' name. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him. And he kept bound with chains and fetters. And he broke the bands and was driven out of the devils into the what? Wilderness. You see that? And Jesus asked him, saying, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for because many devils were entered into him. And they beside him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there, was there, and there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake. And were choked. And when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went and on to see what was done and came to see Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. You see that? Three things, three PowerPoints you got to remember. He was naked, he had no house, he was in the midst of the graves, the dead, right? This is the problem with a lot of believers. 
they're not clothed with the garment of Christ. They're not a part of any ministry, but they wander around amongst the dead claiming to be Christian. Oh, that's good. So they don't have a covering, which is Christ. They're not rooted in a ministry. And they wander through the tombs pretending that they're really a full, a full Christian when they're really not. And this is the wilderness, just like the gathering demoniac where there's something going on in their mind. But how many of y'all know that you can't check your own temperature? If you check your temperature, you won't think you got a fever at all. You'd be like, your hand is the same temperature as your forehead, therefore it'll nullify. You won't know. Somebody else got to check your temperature for you. Someone else got to tell you, nah, you hot. You, you, got, you, need, you burning. You need, to, you need to cool off, right? So a lot of believers don't know that they're in the midst of the gospel of insanity because they don't realize and what I mean by the gospel of insanity is because they think they're in the gospel of Jesus Christ, but they're really in the midst of insanity. They do the same thing every Sunday. The same people speak the same tongues. The same people do the same things. Nothing is changing. They're ever learning, but they're never able to really get to the knowledge of Christ and what that means is, that don't mean, oh, I just know Jesus. It means he becomes alive in you. Something happens. Something changes. God goes from glory to glory. Why is the church stuck? Mm. What is going on? Right? So what happened? We got to get to the root cause of this. Right? What happened with Saul? Actually, you know what? Let me leave that. We'll talk about that afterwards. Actually, let's go to the Old Testament now. I want you to go to Numbers. Yeah, Numbers 14. Numbers 14. 14, yep. Yeah. So Numbers 14, chapter 1, it says, All the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. All the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God that we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be prey where it not be better to us to return back to Egypt and they said one to another let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt now remember that key word there they wanted a captain that would take them back to Egypt right then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Where we at? Uh -oh. oh, verse 6. Okay. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh which were of them that searched the land tore their clothes. And they spoke unto all the company of the children of Israel saying... The land which was passed through to the search it is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give, us, give, it, a, give it us a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not you against the Lord, neither fear you the people of the Lord, for they are bred for us, their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. 
But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe, they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. I will smite them with pestilence and, and disherit them. And will make of, thee great, make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, The Egyptians shall hear it. For thou brought us up this people in thy might and from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitant of the land. For they have heard that thou, Lord, are among this people, and that the Lord art seen face to face, that thy cloud stands over them, and that thou goest before them by day time in a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire by night. You see that? As, and the people as one man. Then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. You see that? And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken again, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation. That's what we talk about generational curses. You see that? To the third and fourth generation, God will deal with like your great, great granddaddy could have done something. God will deal with you over it. That's why you need the blood of Jesus. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgot, forgiven this people from Egypt even unto now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your, the, thy word. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swore unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, you see that, and had followed me fully, with him will I bring into the land whereinto he, he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and said unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with thee this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmured against me, saying unto them, As truly as I, I live, says the Lord, as you have spoken in my ear, so will I do to you. And your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number, from twenty years old and up, which have murmured against me. Doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swore to make you dwell therein, except Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you, have, which you despised. Now pause right there. This is interesting. Now, if you know the story, they wander in the wilderness for 40 years, right? The only ones, who did God say would be the only ones allowed in? Joshua, Caleb, and anyone from 20 years under. Anyone from 20 years up, you got to die in the wilderness. Right? But it was the one, he said he's going to allow the young ones who they spoke death over. 
to make it in. Watch this. First off, they wanted a captain to bring them back to Egypt. Yes? Here's a revelation that you need to write down. Most preachers are captains leading you back to Egypt. Write that down. Most ministries have leaders that are captains assigned to bring you back to Egypt. You see? So they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. But those from 20 and under now symbolically... A lot of y'all have been cast aside by the church. And you guys online. When you come in, you get dirty looks. You seem never to fit in with the religious crowd. In their eyes, you're not saved. In their eyes, you're not making it. But they're actually the ones, the religious people are the ones that are wandering in the wilderness for 40 years spiritually. They're stuck. They're not changing. Nothing is growing. I'm seeing people that used to be crackheads. I'm seeing women that used to sell themselves on the low to pay the rent. I'm seeing men who were gangbangers or, or men that were just the scum of the earth that God is taking and transforming and using right now. So this gospel of insanity, there has to be something deeper. Well, first off, what does the name Joshua mean and represent? And what does the name Caleb mean and represent? Does everybody know that there's no J in Hebrew? Now, you can still use the name Jesus. Trust me. You'll get to heaven using the name of Jesus. Just the same as you use Yahshua. But did you know that Joshua means Jesus? Y'all yeah. yeah, knew that. Joshua means what? Yahshua. Yeah. That's right. It would mean Yeshua. Jesus. And guess what Caleb means? A watchdog. So it's safe to say that we are Caleb and Jesus is like the jo Joshua represents Jesus. And Jesus walks with us. We are the watchdog. We are, we're the one that walks beside Jesus. We're the loyal ones. But remember, it said that Joshua had another spirit. He was fully dedicated to the Lord. This is why a lot of y'all, and a lot of y'all online, this is why you get persecuted when you visit churches. Because you have another spirit. You, you're called and you have a, your heart is fully in it. And a lot of the religious people that are wandering in the wilderness, they don't like that. Yeah. They don't like that about you. you. They'll try to put the fire out. Yeah. They'll try to discourage you. Yeah. They'll try to tell you you need to calm down. Yes. You're, too, you're too fanatical. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened to me. Yep. And it's not just church, it's family members that were Christians growing up. And the whole time when you was in sin or when you weren't really knowing Jesus, they had nothing to say about you. They never said you're too much with the weed. You know what I mean? You're too much, you're too much in the club, you're a fanatical club head. No. Shoot, Thursday was Thirsty Thursday, take off Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? Walk it off Wednesdays. Freak it out Fridays. <laughs> slutty Saturdays. Yeah. Hang over Sunday. Like, no one had a problem with anything. You, you, you was fanatical with video games. No one had a problem with it. But the minute you are zealous for Jesus oh. and you got another spirit, Come on. it seemed like everybody got a problem with it. Come on. They got a problem with it. And I see, <laughs> oh, 
Oh, this is about to heat up. I can feel it. Thank you, Jesus. So now, we're breaking this down. And the revelation that God has been showing me. Mm, I just want to get to it. So, okay. So now let's fast forward to the book of Joshua. Go to Joshua chapter 4. So now you see in Numbers, they wandered in the wilderness 40 years, right? Until that whole generation died off, right? Okay. Go to Joshua. Now again, it's something about a dog. In the days of Gideon. Who did God tell Gideon that he was going to choose? God said that he had too many men. Do you know some ministries have too many people? I know that sounds crazy. Right? I know preachers online like, shut up. I'm getting paid. Right? But some ministries have too many people. It's messing up the war. Imagine that. Man, you got a you got a you got a mega church with two thousand solid members, and God wakes you up one day and says, "Narrow it down to 300. <laughs> right? <laughs> a lot of cats ain't gonna listen to the Lord because they have been yoked to other things. If you know what I'm saying, but it's what God says to to Gideon, right? He says, "You got too many soldiers." What was the sign, God said, to prove who would be my soldier and who would not fight for me? Those by the river who drink like a dog. Did you know that? I don't even go to go there. I'm, you know, I'm not even going to go there today. I'm not going to because I know I'm, the camera's going to end up dying and... <laughs> I'm battery's faithful, man. It ain't shut off yet. Thank you, Jesus. So now let's we at Joshua 3, right? In the name of Jesus, verse 1 going down. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from uh Shittim and, and came to Jordan. And he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days. How many days? Three. Okay. That the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, you shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure, Come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way herefore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Remember that key word, to sanctify yourself. Amen. Amen. And Joshua spoke unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that I, excuse me, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And thou shalt command the priests to bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you are come to the brink of the water of where? Jordan. You shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. Mm. And Joshua said, hereby you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Jergazites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. And therefore take you how many men? Twelve men out of the tribe of Israel, out of every tribe of man. 
And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass when the people removed their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the ark and the covenant before the people. And as they bear the ark, were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped into the brim of the water, for Jordan overflows all his, his banks all the time of harvest. That the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon the heap very far from the city, Adam, that is beside Zeratan, and those that came down towards the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on the dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground unto all the people were passed clean over Jordan. You see that? This is amazing. Now watch this. We're going to carry into the four. Okay, verse one. And it came to pass that when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spoke unto Joshua saying, Take you twelve men. How many men? Twelve, twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe of a man. And command you them saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm. Twelve stones. And you shall carry them over with you. And leave them in the lodging place. Where you shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men. Whom he had prepared of the children of Israel. Out of every tribe of man. And Joshua said unto them. Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God. Into the midst of the Jordan. And take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribe of the children of Israel. That this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in the time to come, saying, What mean you by these stones? Then you shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, and the waters of Jordan were cut off. And the stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Now pause right there. This is phenomenal. Did y'all know that God himself was in the midst of the Jordan? This is what he was saying. Right? I'll take those. Thank you so much. Now hold on a minute. I need y'all to catch the significance of this. Blessings. Alright, praise the Lord. So now check this out. So God would be in the midst of the Jordan himself when they pass through the Jordan River. What does that bring to, to mind? Well, first off, what does the name Jordan mean in Hebrew? One from above who comes down. Pause. The Holy Ghost descended on Jesus where? In the midst of the Jordan River. So this is interesting that in the Old Testament, Jesus met him in the midst of the Jordan River. And in the New Testament, Jesus goes back to the Jordan River. There's a gateway over the Jordan River. Okay, there's a portal. There is a dimensional gateway there. So Jordan means one from above who comes down. I find it amazing how Jesus was in the Jordan in the Old Testament and he's in the Jordan in the New Testament. Right? I find these numbers significant, right? Twelve. He said, choose twelve men out of every tribe. Remember that key factor. Okay? So now they're passing through the Jordan River. And something amazing happens, yet terrifying, right? 
in chapter 5. Now, we're not going to read the whole chapter because of time. But. Verse 13. Go to verse 13. It's, I had too many pages, y'all. It's one, one chapter away. <laughs> Where are you going? Check this out. Yeah. Chapter 5, verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was in Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Are you for us? Or against us. And he said nay. But as captain of the armies of the Lord. Am I now come. And Joshua fell on the face to the earth. Fell on his face to the earth. And did worship. And said unto him. What says my Lord unto his servant. And the captain of the Lord's army. Said unto Joshua. Loosen your shoes. From off thy feet, for the place wherein you stand is what? Holy. How many of y'all know this was Jesus Christ? You want to know Christ? You better recognize him. This is Christ before Joshua. The great Joshua speaking to the, to the lesser Joshua. Now. Let's try to figure this out now. Watch the order. They wander in the wilderness. 40 years. They go into the Jordan River. They pass over the Jordan River. Into the where? The promised land. Right? Wilderness. Jordan. Promised land. Y'all catch the order, right? Okay. Go to Joshua 14. Now you stay there. And I'm going to finish something in Joshua 5. While y'all are in 14, okay? And it came to pass, verse 1. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites which were on the side of Jordan westward and all the kings of the Canaanites were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over and their heart melted neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. This is amazing. At that time the Lord said unto Joshua Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskin. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt that were males. Even all the men of war died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. Y'all see that? Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were, with, that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord unto whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord swore unto their fathers, that he would give us a land flowing with what? Milk and honey. You see that? That's a key factor. Now, where we at? Joshua 14, right? Watch this. Verse 8 going, verse um, 7. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to Epsi out of the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt 
but I wholly follow the Lord thy God. Say that with me. I have to wholly follow the Lord my God. I'm not saying holy like holiness. That's also the key. But holy means whole. All the way. Not halfway. Not gray areas. Not lukewarm. All the way for the Lord. Right? And Moses swore on that day saying, Surely the land where, whereon thy feet have trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive as he said, these 40 and five years, even since the Lord spoke his word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day four score and five years old. How old is that? Four score and five years. Huh? How old is he? Hold on, I shouldn't have asked the, People online are like What is wrong with this congregation? Can I buy a vowel? Check this out Look at this As yet I am as strong this day As I was in the day that Moses sent me As my strength was then Even so is my strength now For war Both to go out and to come in So look at how Joshua and Caleb are speaking They're saying look I'm an old man right now, much older than the young soldiers, but I'm just as strong to fight now as I was during the days of Moses. Amen. Now listen, this is, we about to get into it now. So let me show you what Jesus did to break the curse of insanity, but you got to receive the blessing. Okay. First off, let's read about John a little bit. Go to Matthew chapter three. I'll read verse 1 going down. You write it down, I'll read it. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that spoke it by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one what? Crying where? Crying where? In the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord and make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins. And his food was locusts and wild honey. So he was quoting from the book of Isaiah, right? What did Isaiah say in chapter 40? You can read it on your own time, right? Prepare you the way of the Lord. Crying, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. You often wonder what did John mean by this, right? When he was quoting this, what did he mean by this? This is very interesting. <laughs> what if I told you that Old Testament outward, New Testament inward? Y'all hear me say that a lot, right? What happens when you cry in the wilderness? No one hears you. You ever heard what do they say? If a tree falls in the woods and no one's there, technically does it make noise? Like, come on. But it makes noise, okay? But let, let me ask y'all a question, though. Let's look at this deeper in the spirit. What is John the Baptist really saying when he quoted from Isaiah? Old Testament, they walked by the trees in the wilderness. New Testament, they were the trees. Because in the wilderness, you cry, but you're only talking to the woods. You're talking to trees. They don't respond. They're stuck in the wilderness. I'll prove it. I'll show y'all a hidden revelation. Go to Mark chapter 8. Watch this. Now you're going to see why this happened. Mark 
verse 22 going down. Y'all ready? Mark 8, 22 going down. Everybody there? In Jesus' name. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit in on his eyes, he put his hands upon him and asked if he saw. And he looked up and said, I see men as what? Wow. Wow. Come on. I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hand again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was, re he was restored and saw every man clearly. Now, this is where we're going with this. There has been a curse that has to be broken. It's not the gospel of Jesus Christ that you're seeing. It's the gospel of insanity. These churches and these ministries are stuck in the wilderness, wandering, wandering, wandering. But you notice the children that are not really, they don't really feel like going to the church. They don't want to, want to come around. It's because they see the phoniness of the older generation. They see the pretending. They see it. And this, it's not that the youth don't want to know God. It's they got to be cut. Or they got to be removed from the other generation that God said will not come out of the wilderness. We have to encourage the young. Now, when I say the young, I'm not just talking 12-year-olds, 15-year-olds. Technically, y'all are young. You know what I'm saying? And, and see, with the blood of Jesus, this doesn't exclude you online if you're 70 listening to this message. It's not a physical thing now. Now, I want to show y'all something very interesting. Let's go to the time of Jesus Christ. And we're going to go Matthew chapter 3. So, where is the promised land? Now, what's it called? Huh? Well, no, no, I mean the physical location. Israel. Right? All right. Jerusalem, right? Now, everybody in Matthew 3. <laughs> All right, chapter one going down. We got to get this in. Well, we already read some of this, but we'll read it again. Actually, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, we will. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent you, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Lord, make straight his path. So now you can see it. Jesus is crying for the people that wander in the wilderness. He's telling them there's a way out. I can take you into the promised land. Watch this. The same was John. Hold on. He said, Make your path straight, right? When Paul was blinded on the road to Damascus, he was brought to a house and a man was sent to heal Paul and gave Paul back his sight. What was the name of the street Paul was on? Straight street. Make straight the way of the Lord. The Bible says, I will make your crooked ways straight. Paul was crooked with Christ. God made him straight. You see why he told you the name of that street. Now listen to this. Because Paul was wandering in the wilderness. Thought he was doing God's service, but he wasn't. Listen to this. And the same John had his raiment of camel's, camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and honey. Then went out to 
to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan and were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to the baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come? This is amazing. Because now we're getting a better comprehension of this word play. Oh my God in heaven. In the wilderness, who was getting bit by vipers? Of that time, they was getting bit by vipers in the... So when he's saying, oh, you generation of vipers, he's also giving a nugget that you're the generation that is not making it out of the wilderness. <laughs> you're the wanderers. You're insane. You have the gospel of insanity. Nothing is changing in your life. You are wandering helplessly in the wilderness. Because when you think, oh, generation of vipers, you're like, oh, they're the vipers. You're a generation of vipers, right? But what's the other way to look at it? You're the generation in the wilderness that gets struck down by vipers. You don't make it out. Ooh. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruit, meat for repentance. Think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say to you that God is able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. What did God command the Israelites to take with them? Remember the 12 stones? They had to carry the stones across. He's saying God is able to raise up more stones. This is a spiritual thing now. Oh, my God. You got something to say? Uh, I've read that verse so many times and I never understood what it had to do with Abraham. I mean, it's off topic. Yeah, yeah. We're going we to let, let's breed it. Let's go into it. Now watch. Now the, also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Ooh. Wait a minute. What trees is he talking about now? Is he talking about the people? They're getting cut off. That's why the blind man said, the blind man was actually seeing deeper in the spirit the first time around. He said, I see men as trees. Jesus was like, oh, no, 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 no. You ain't supposed to be seeing that deep now. Just be healed now in Jesus' name. Right? He's seen the wilderness was actually the people. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Watch this. The axe is laid at the root of the people, <clears throat> the trees. Therefore, every tree which brings forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Ah. Now watch this. Oh, this is so good. I indeed baptize. Where am I at? Oh, Okay. I, well, I read without reading. It was like in my spirit. I'm like, where am I? I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan, in his, whose fan is in his hand and will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with the unquenchable fire. Then comes Yeshua, Yahshua, then comes Joshua, <laughs> from Galilee to Jordan to John to be what? Baptized. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of you, and you come to me. Yeshua answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I am so excited for this. Y'all ready for this? So the <laughs> this is bananas. So now, Jesus Christ is back in the Jordan, right? He was in the Jordan in the Old Testament, met with Joshua. Caleb, right? And the children of Israel. He was in the midst of the Jordan River. Thousands of years later, he's back in the Jordan River for a second round. Something else is going on, though. Look at the order now. I'm going to see if y'all catch it. The Holy Spirit descends because that's what Jordan means. One from above who descends. One from above who comes down. The, there's a gateway there so powerful that Jordan had to be named there because that's where the Holy Ghost comes down on Jesus 
or Joshua, right? Yahshua, right? Now listen, watch this. In the next chapter, in the next chapter, y'all, then was Jesus, excuse me, then was Yahshua led up of the spirit into the where? Wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Y'all ready for this? Ooh. Watch this. Watch this. Moses, Yahshua, Caleb, and the Israelites went from Egypt, um, went from Egypt wilderness, right? Crossed over the Jordan into the promised land. Listen to this now. Jesus flipped it. He went from promised land through Jordan to Egypt in the world. <laughs> he went back. He had to go see Pharaoh. He didn't meet with the devil. He met with the Pharaoh. Amen. That's who the devil is. It was the devil. But listen, I need you to catch that. I think it went over a lot of y'all heads. In the Old Testament, they went from Egypt in the wilderness through the Jordan into the promised land. The new and great in the, in the, in the eternal Yahshua, right, went from promised land, crossed Jordan the other way, and went into the wilderness towards Egypt to fight the Pharaoh. Did you catch it? He had to reverse it to set us free from the gospel of insanity. He had to break the curse. This is why the devil immediately met with him, because the devil knew what he was doing. Yeah. Hold on, yeah. what you coming back for? Uh -huh. Why you coming back this way? Because uh -huh. uh -huh, I got to smite out the remnant. I got to smite out the remnant. Because as long as the Pharaoh lived, he was calling the children of Israel in their heart. He was calling them in their heart. Hold on, what's the, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to add something light, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you said that there was in the wilderness for 40 years, right? And then he'd go for 40 days. Man, come on, I was about to, remember I told you how to write it down? I got, we got a smart crowd with us, praise God. Yeah, go ahead. The 40 day thing, too. Yeah, that's what he was saying. So here's the significance. 40 years in the wilderness, Jesus went 40 days in the wilderness. One day represented one year. Oh, this is so good. So he had to flip it and reverse it and go back to Egypt. He had to go back to the wilderness to strike the head of Satan, which is the modern day Pharaoh. Y'all catching this? Now, remember what they said, though. They said to pick you 12 men from each tribe. Right? How many is that? Let's see who can get it. Huh? Yeah. Amen. Now, something interesting is going on here. I want you to go to the book of Acts. Chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. I want you to notice the word play. Y'all ready? Yeah. Verse 13 going down. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, and there abode Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, Zelotes, Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together were about 120. I found that interesting. Because I'm like, why bring up the amount of people? It didn't say there was 120. It said around about 120. So it was give or take math-wise, right? And I said, well, but something ain't right here because 
if my math serves me, I'm at 144 mm. with all 12. But then it hit me, Judas was taken out of the equation. Judas was removed, right? And how many of y'all know that the tribe of Dan is not mentioned? Because the tribe of Dan is a tribe, of, uh, it's called the serpent along the way. It's the serpentine tribe. Mm. Oh, I've been following this um, prophetess on YouTube, and I asked the Lord for discernment, like, is she really filled with the Holy Ghost? And she always has the Israel flag behind her. Um, her name and she said that she believes that, and her husband, he sends emails, and they said that they believe that Antichrist, the man, will be from the tribe of Dan. Yeah, a lot of people believe that. Um, I don't, uh, the, the, the Israel flag has the hexagram on it, the star, yeah. right? That's actually a demonic star. God never approved of that star. So when I look at people, I try to look at their fruit. You know what I mean? If, if someone says they're a prophet, but they got a hexagram, God would have told them, you, gotta, you can't have that star because that's the star of Moloch, right? And I'll break that down another day. But I appreciate you confirming about the tribe of Dan, right? So if we eliminate one from the equation, how much does that add up to? Let's do the math. So we got 132, right? So pretty close to the number mentioned in the book of Acts. And I found that to be kind of interesting, right? So now this is what we got to do. Let's break all this down. Let's recap everything and see if we can make sense of everything, right? First off, we know that we are not supposed to be walking in sin. We are supposed to be walking in holiness and righteousness, right? We know that Joshua represents Jesus and Caleb represents the church. We know that the Bible said Caleb had another spirit and he was completely sold out for the Lord. He totally, wholly followed after God. And we know that this is what will get us out of the gospel of insanity. Because you know it, I know it, everybody sees it, all y'all online see it, that people are insane in the churches. Church has become insanity. It's become a madhouse. It's all about entertainment. There is stuff going on in the churches that you would not even imagine would even be allowed. Preachers are telling their congregation to go outside and eat grass. Because they're lambs and they're really doing it. Preachers are taking gasoline and saying, I'm going to turn this into water and people are drinking it. No. Preachers are telling women not to wear panties so the Holy Spirit can move on you better. I'm not making this up. This wow. is real. All this holy laughter everywhere, right? Where they just laugh for three hours during a service while people are dying for the gospel in Iraq. Yeah. That don't make no sense at all. You have these strange spirits coming into the churches and unholy fire and the kundalini force. and uh, They're smoking the Holy Ghost now. This is what they're saying. They smoke the Holy They're high off the Holy Ghost. They get drunk and, and, and all of this foolishness, right? You see, you see how it's, it's, it's out of line with, pray, with the praise and worship, right? Where you see most of the Christian rap stuff is trash. It's trash. Get over it. It's trash. It's not edifying. There's only a few, bro uh, few uh, brothers and sisters, whether, doing, uh, whether in Christian rap or whether in just praise and worship, that are actually being used to edify people. Most of them are trash. And they're living in sin. And they're of the generation dying off in the wilderness. They're not, gonna, they're not helping you to get into the promised land. So this whole, this whole gospel of insanity, it seems like you wonder, like, this don't make no sense. Like, I take notes. You know what I mean? Like, I could preach a message, wait a month, preach it again, and some will be like, wow, that was amazing. I just preached it. You don't remember? It's real. People go to read, they can't hold it in. They go to fast, they fail. They don't feel like there's no growth. But my Bible says that God goes from glory to glory. So we have to figure out 
Lord, you became a curse on the tree that we may be set free. You took the curse that we could be set free from the curse. Right? And it's time to live an awesome life for the Lord. It's time to come out of the wilderness. It's time to say, I am not going to be led into the wilderness no more. I am not going to be a part of the gospel of insanity. Because now I see it. It all makes perfect sense. That only Joshua and Caleb were allowed in. Only Jesus and the true church is going to be allowed in. You better be a part of the spirit of Caleb. Someone who was totally sold out for the Lord and has a different type of spirit. So this means you should be encouraged, not discouraged when you're hated by other, other religious people. You should, be, you should be inspired. Now, some of y'all are just, you know, out of line. And no, people don't like you because of your character. You know what I mean? But I'm talking to the people that are so fired up for the Lord. But when they come around other Christians, whether they go to a house study, whether they go to a certain, uh, they, eeny, meeny, miny, mo a church and visit it. They feel like when you try to talk to the pastor, you try to talk to a deacon or anybody. And you're all fired up. You're like, man, the Lord is so good. Like, oh my God, like, hallelujah. I was in prayer last night. And they're looking at you like, okay, cool. Like, so what's your name? We'll, we'll get you a part of the ministry. Fill out this form, right? Don't be discouraged about that. Don't let these people put your fire out. Your goal is to stay out of the wilderness. Jesus went back there to break the head of Pharaoh. Because see, Pharaoh left with the, with the, with the, ah, that's good. Pharaoh left with the Israelites. In their mind and in their soul, he was still there. You see what I'm saying to you? He was in Egypt, but his spirit left with, his spirit left with them. So Jesus had to strike at that. This is why, remember what I told you earlier? I said that they, they wanted captains to bring them back to. Notice that Jesus appeared to Joshua as a captain. Oh, come on. Because Jesus said all they wanted captains to take them back to Egypt. I've come from God the Father to be a captain to take you into heaven, to take you into the promised land. So choose you who you want, because most people have itching ears. They run to the punked out churches, where you blend right in. You know what I'm saying? The pastor never speaks a word that convicts you. He never tells you, you guys, get married, stop fornicating. He don't talk about homosexuality. He don't talk about lying. He don't talk about not watching worldly things because he is a captain from Egypt. He is, he is paid for by the government to keep you in the wilderness wow. blind. You generation of vipers means you're a generation that wanders in the wilderness getting struck by vipers. Wow. And the good news, I got good news for you. Wow. That Jesus Christ told Moses and Joshua and Caleb. He said, make a brass serpent and hold it high on a wooden pole. And whoever gets bit by a viper... If they just look up, I don't care if you can barely see it and you got 30 seconds to live. The minute you look up with faith, immediately the venom is nullified in your blood. And I'm here to tell you that the reason why Revelation says Jesus' feet was as brass, the same type of metal used to make the serpent is because now when we're bit by the vipers in the spirit realm, like depression, suicidal thoughts, anger... Lust, bitterness and unforgiveness, hatred and racism, jealousy, greed. When we're struck by these vipers, if we just look up to Jesus, hallelujah, whose feet is the same grass as the serpent, we are healed from that attack. And you see, the generation of vipers wants to keep you in the wilderness in the gospel of insanity, not the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Because the gospel of Jesus Christ, you go from glory to glory. My Bible says they multiplied. My Bible says they grew. My Bible says they went from one miracle to the next. My Bible says they cast out one devil to the next. They broke that curse in the name of Jesus Christ. So you need to watch out for these people that are not of, of the generation that you're in. See, you're of the 20 and under generation. Remember, Old Testament was a literal age. New Testament, it's a literal principle. See, you are under the 20 and under generation. That's with Jesus and Caleb getting you up out of the insanity wilderness. See, John the Baptist was right where he needed to be. He was in the midst of the wilderness and he said, How long? Make straight the ways of the Lord. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness because I tell everybody what's going on, but nobody hears me. I might as well talk to trees. And this is why John the Baptist was sent from the Lord to speak to the trees in hopes that they would come to life. So now you know why if you're going through it, if you read but you never learn, you take notes but you forget, you're inspired by a word, leave here and argue with somebody at McDonald's. You wonder what is going on with you, why aren't you growing? What is this, this, this arrested development, this dwarfed mind? That means it don't grow, it's stuck. It's because of the gospel of insanity. And I'm here to tell you that because Jesus went in reverse to break the curse, there it is, you had the Israelites went from Egypt in the wilderness through the Jordan into the promised land. Jesus, because he's humble, instead of a horse, he rode on a donkey. Instead of a mansion, he slept on a park bench. Instead of feasting, he lived off the bread of, of God. See, Jesus had to reverse it for us. He had to go from the promised land through Jordan into the wilderness to meet with the devil. To say, look, in the Old Testament, I set the people free from you because don't ever get it twisted. The Pharaoh was a representation of Satan. The devil was all up in Pharaoh using Pharaoh. And in the Old Testament, even though the people were set free, their mind was still an Egyptian mind. That's why God said this generation got to die off. This generation got to go. But there's a deeper revelation. Moses stood in the gap for the Israelites. Moses said to God because God was getting ready to wipe everybody out. He was going to destroy all of Israel and only leave Moses. He was so mad he even overlooked Joshua and Caleb and said they got to go. Everyone got to go. Now listen to me. Moses stood in the gap and said, Lord, if you do this though, all the people of the world, oh, there it is, there it is. He said, if you do this, Lord, all the people of the world will know you as the God who took your people out of Egypt only to kill them yourself. And he said, have mercy, oh God, have mercy. And I can't help but to think, in the Gospel of John, Moses is paralleled directly with Jesus. The Bible says that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by what? Jesus Christ. So Moses was a foreshadow of Jesus, that deliverer that would lead his people out of the hands of Pharaoh, out of the wilderness, through the Jordan into the promised land. Jesus Christ takes us out of the hands of the Pharaoh, out of the world which is Egypt, through the Jordan which is getting baptized into heaven which is the promised land. And what you need to realize is that Moses stood in the gap for the Israelites. Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them. Because it was at that moment, listen to me, it was at that moment God was getting ready to destroy all of us. See, I don't know. God had a private conversation with Jesus Christ. God said, I am going to destroy all humanity. All of humanity. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. If you destroy all of these people, the devil and the evil angels will only say that you came to the earth as the savior of the world only to destroy them anyway. 
You see, he stood in the gap for you. It's time to love him and appreciate him the way he deserves to be loved and appreciated. If you would just listen to me, your way out of the wilderness is to totally live for him. That is it. Caleb and Joshua had a different type of spirit. They had the Holy Ghost. They loved the Lord with all their heart. What did Jesus say? He said, what is the commandment? To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your spirit, with all your mind, and all that's within, and love your neighbor as thyself. The reason why you don't learn, sister, the reason why you're not growing, brother, is because you don't have a different type of spirit yet. You're still caught up in the religious spirit. You're still taking out the traditions that have been taught you. You're not reading like you're supposed to. You are not living a life of prayer like you're supposed to. And because you're not totally sold out for God, this is why it seems like your walk ain't changing. But I'm here to tell you that a greater Moses is here. You see, the old Moses couldn't sprinkle some blood off his hand and change you. But the new Moses can sprinkle blood on you and make you worthy and give you a chance to come out of the wilderness. He can get you out, but you got to be totally sold out for him. You got to say, Lord, I am not going to be a part of the wilderness no more. When, when the blind man opens up his eyes, he's not going to see me as a tree. And I ain't getting cut down. I'm going to be a tree that moves around and bears fruit. I'm not going to be a tree stuck in limbo with no all evil fruit in the wilderness of sin. I'm going to walk in the righteousness of Christ. I'm going to live for him. I'm not playing this game no more. And if they want to stay in the wilderness, they can stay. But I'm going to tell you right now. Thank God for the elders that are strong in the Lord. Thank God for the pastors and the preachers. There's not a lot of them. But thank God for the ones that are standing firm on the word of God. Those are the men of God that will go to war with you against the enemy. And they'll say, I'm just as strong today as I was when I was your age, son. I'm just as strong right now. I'll fast with you. I'll go to war with you and fight the enemy today. God bless those elders. God bless those preachers. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want everybody online and everybody right here to say this with me. Now, who are we missing? Who's in here? Can you get my wife, please? This is what we're going to do. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go. It's time to pray. It's time to pray, I said. Yes. It's time to pray. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. It's time to break this curse of insanity. And doing, going to church every Sunday, nothing ever changing. Having Bible studies and nothing happening, nothing changing. You listen to a hundred sermons online a week and ain't nothing changing in your life. Something's wrong. It's time to break that curse. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, everybody, say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ I, repent of all sins. I repent of all sins. It's time for me to leave the wilderness. I need another type of spirit. I need the Holy Ghost. Filling me, Jesus, with your Holy Spirit. I have not been holy for you. I have not been complete walking with you. It's time for me to sell out for the Lord, to love you with all my heart, all my soul, and all that's within. I need the same mind that you had, Lord, that Yahshua had, Caleb had, Jesus walking his dog. I want to be a dog for the Lord, a loyal dog, a watchdog, a dog that attacks when Jesus tells me to attack. A dog that sits when Jesus tells me to sit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I break the curse of the gospel of insanity. I'm breaking the curse of the silly. I break the curse of the silly. The dwarf spirit that doesn't allow me to learn. Lord, patch up the holes that have me leaking out. I get power, it leaks out. I read the word, it leaks out. Keep it within me, oh God. Heal me, God. 
Lord, give me a hunger and a thirst. Lord, you went back into the wilderness to crush the head of the serpent, to crush the head of Pharaoh. So that way Pharaoh doesn't come into my mind. He's not still living in my soul. I reject the captains of Egypt. Those false pre preachers, false teachers, prophetesses, false prophets that are trying to lead me back to Egypt. Expose them, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going into heaven. I'm making it in. I'm making it in. I'm making it in. Because I'm following the captain of the armies of heaven. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my king of glory. And like the gathering demoniac, the, the crazy man with the 2,000 demons, he had no clothes, he had no home, and he was in the midst of the dead. I'm going to get covered by Jesus' garment. I'm going to find the ministry that's my home. And I'm going to be alive and not dead. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to be clothed in my right mind. I declare it now. I rebuke demonic thoughts. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imaginations that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I bring every thought in my head to be captive to Jesus, to think whatever is pure, whatever is true, whatever is right, whatever is holy, of good report. I'm gonna think on these things. I come against all the chemicals attacking my literal mind. I find split personalities. I find schizophrenia. I bind bipolar demons. I bind every demon in the mind. I curse you by the root. The, 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 what's the word, oh God, help me. The axe is laid at the root. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cut down every demonic tree in my life. Any wilderness trees, I cut you down. In the name of Jesus. I command the demons in my mind to leave. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Savior, the warrior, the Lord of heaven and earth. Lord God, keep me out of the wilderness of insanity, the wilderness of repetition, doing the same thing every Sunday, every week, but getting nowhere getting nowhere, expecting things to change. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna read more. I'm gonna pray more. I'm gonna sing a new song. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. When the insanity spirit was sent to King Saul, King David came and played music. I'm gonna praise my way out of insanity. I'm going to praise my way out of the wilderness. Every day, I'm going to try to do something new for the Lord. I'm going to try to improve. I'm going to be of a different type of spirit. And I'm going to love God with all my heart. I don't care who doesn't want to. I'm not doing this for nobody. I'm doing this for my Jesus. I'm committing right now. And listen to me in Jesus' name. I don't care if your husband or wife don't want to wholly love the Lord. I don't care if your children, your neighbor, your mama, your pastor don't want to wholly love the Lord. Y'all got to remember, I'm talking to people online from all over the world. Some of them don't have a local place to gather. You understand me? I don't care who it is. If they don't want to wholly love the Lord, leave them in the wilderness. Leave them in the wilderness. They're not going with you. And you better not be a punked out Lot's wife looking back. Listen to me carefully. Lot knew better. He knew better. He said, well, I got to go. There's no use of me turning into salt along with her. 
You got to stand firm in the name of Jesus. Some of y'all are, are letting your husband or your wife, your mother-in-law, your father, your brother, your homegirl you grew up with, your friends you thought you was cool with. Why are you letting them keep you in the wilderness? Wow. It's time for you to say, I'm going to do this for real this time. All with all my heart. Lord, anoint me to love you with all my heart. Say it. Lord, anoint me to love you with all my heart. With all my mind, with all my soul, that means no more loving me, but loving you. I don't want 2 Timothy chapter 3 to be on me. I want to love you more than pleasure. I want to be thankful. I want to be holy. I don't want to despise those that are good. I don't want to have a form of godliness, but deny the power. That is those in the wilderness. They have a form of godliness, but they're insane. Every week it's the same thing. Nothing is changing. Nothing. You got ministries opening up everywhere like it's a food chain. But ain't nobody getting set free from cancer. Ain't nobody getting set free from alcoholism. Ain't nobody getting delivered from drugs. Ain't nobody getting set free from depression. It's time for Joshua and Caleb to rise up in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave that generation behind. Who cares what they got to say about you? It's time for you to be the leader in your community. You to be the leader in your house. You to be the leader in the people around you. It's time to rise up in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of the wilderness. Go into the promised land. Pass through the Jordan. Let the Holy Ghost fall on you and make it in. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I believe. I believe. I believe in the Son of God. Oh, I believe. I believe. I the Son of God, He died for me, rose for me, came back for me, the Son of God. Listen to this. He went from the promised land to the Jordan to the wilderness to get us. Wow. Good. Nice. Good night. How good is he? How good is he? Humble yourself before the Lord. How good is he that he would leave the 99 and go get you in the wilderness? You wandered away. You've been watching things you're not supposed to. You've been listening to things you're not supposed to. You've been doing things you're not supposed to. He could have left you in the wilderness, you generation of vipers, getting bit by the serpents in the wilderness with no one there to help you. The brass serpent ain't there no more. That physical serpent ain't there no more. But the living brass savior showed up. Instead of a wooden pole, he was on a wooden cross. And if you just look up to him, he will save you. He will set you free from whatever it is you done got yourself caught in. Some of you might be addicted to porn. You might be, a, might be going through depression. You might be contemplating suicide. Don't do it. Don't do it. It ain't worth it. And you ain't getting to heaven that way. Some of y'all are addicted to drugs, but you're ashamed to tell anybody. You still go to the weed man, the dope man, the Marlboro man, the Newport man. You still go to the alcohol man. I'm telling you, that's the wilderness. You can get out of it. He Amen. left the 99 to go get you. He yes. left the 99 to go get you. This is why he went in reverse to break the curse. They went from Egypt, wilderness, Jordan River, promised land. Jesus went from promised land, Jordan River, back to Egypt in the wilderness to get us. Hallelujah. I say, Lord, I will follow you. Amen. I'm going to follow you, Lord. Help me to follow you. Keep me from insanity. I break insanity right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Off of my mind. I am not insane. I am clothed in my right mind. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. Keep me there, God. And keep these devils from coming back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah.